again, inshallah, and you will do that right. I know that you always do. Uh, but just before we do that, I would like to invite our chief guest tonight. Our uh, next speaker uh, is George Galloway, who is the Respect Party uh, MP for Bradford West. Uh, he's also the founder of Viva Palestina Convoys, a renowned politician throughout the world for his stand on different issues. He speaks when others don't. He talks when others keep quiet. A man who never, support, who never stopped supporting and fighting out for the injustice and oppression. Would you put your hands together for George Galloway. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Mir Sir, General, Air Marshal, distinguished scholars, reverend priests of Bowdoin Church, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. Thank you for that very kind introduction and thank you for this wonderful work that you are doing, which I'm delighted to, indeed honored, to have the opportunity to contribute to this evening. There are many educational charities, there are many good causes in Pakistan, around the world, and indeed here at home. One of the things I'm campaigning most strongly about is the exceedingly poor performance of Bradford's own schools, where we have the eighth worst educational outcomes out of a league table of 155. So much so that I have persuaded the Secretary of State for Education, Michael Gove, to come to Bradford and spend the day with me going around these schools and meeting the education community, parents, students, teachers and others, some serving some retired. Mr. Chima uh, likes to tell me that he's retired, but in fact he's more active than most people who haven't retired. And I press them into service uh, when Michael Gove comes here, and I'm grateful for him uh, agreeing to do that. So we have many problems in our own schools, and it struck me was reading the literature and watching the video and hearing the wonderful case that the Air Marshal put for the schools that you have made possible through the Kashmir Education Foundation, it struck me that maybe instead of us going to Kashmir to help, that Kashmir needs to come to Bradford to help because if our schools were as good as good as those schools, then we'd have fewer problems uh, than we currently have. But we're a rich country, and Pakistan is not. Azad Kashmir is not. And that's why it needs the support of the general public. I have to say to the Air Marshal, forgive me for dashing his hopes, I will indeed, I promise you, press the British government as you pressed our ambassador, our High Commissioner, and the ambassador of the United States to give just 10,000 pounds per month to invest in the future of all these children in Pakistan. I fear that it will fall on deaf ears because we are governed, we are doomed to be governed for now at least here and in the United States by people who would rather drop drones and bombs on the people of Pakistan than give £10,000 a month in order to improve their schools. And they wonder why there is terrorism in some parts of Pakistan. I'll tell you this, there was no terrorism in Pakistan. There was no Taliban 
in Pakistan before the UK and the United States invaded and occupied Afghanistan and spread the war across the border. That's what's radicalizing people. And we need to take we need to take a step back and a turnaround and a reversal of that policy. I've said if we had bombed the people of Afghanistan with kindness, with aid, with schools, instead of the armaments with which we bombed them, the conflict in Afghanistan might have been closed a very long time ago. So that's my view uh, on that. But of course, I will uh, continue to press the British government to support these schools. And I'll be armed with the information that I have adduced this evening by the DVD and the material. There were a number of things that made this particular charity uh, stand out for me. The first, I must tell you, is the unmistakable and very tall figure of Mr. Chima. You can't miss him, so you can't miss the cause when he's coming towards you with it. And there's no escaping him. Uh, he's unremitting. And uh, he finally cornered me and uh, forced me to listen. Uh, and when I did listen, there were a number of things that made this charity and these schools stand out for me. First was Mr. Chima. The second was the emphasis on rural, underprivileged, and girls' education. Because there is no future for Pakistan. As Mr. Jinnah himself said, upon the foundation of the Republic, if we cut off 50% of the population of the country, and if you don't educate your girls, you'll have uneducated women who for the most part will remain behind the walls and in the houses and will, will be a loss to the society as a whole. The rural is obvious. In the big cities of Pakistan, there are tons of schools. But in the rural areas, there are very few. And of course, the underprivileged in a poor country have lost the lottery in life. To be underprivileged in a country that's already poor and can do little to help hoist the underprivileged up is a very miserable fate indeed. And so a school which is aimed at all three of these sectors is one that's going to commend itself to me. The third is the method of learning. Child-centered cognitive learning. Not learning by rote. You know, a parrot can learn uh, by rote. You can line up parrots and teach them to squawk upon the prompting of the teacher. But the parrot isn't thinking about this squawk, and it certainly can't solve any problems. Maybe the parrots could solve some of the problems that governments are failing to solve, now that I think of it. But if you teach a child to think how to reach an answer, rather than by rote, to repeat it to the teacher on a prompt, then you have made a very considerable step forward. And one of the things which my wife, who's in exactly this field of child development, and working in Indonesia, in far-flung places in Indonesia, one of the things she mentioned was then mentioned on the DVD by one of the young student teachers, that this method of learning gives children confidence. And confidence, I'm bound to tell you, is key. I myself have very little education. I'm embarrassed to tell you I left school at 16 and went to work in a factory, but I've got a lot of confidence. <laughs> and that confidence has carried me a very long way. I have a lot of confidence, and so I know the importance of confidence. I speak regularly. Yesterday, my wife and I were at Cambridge University, and we're back there again next week, and Oxford a couple of weeks after that. The key, and I'm speaking at Eton College, the most expensive and famous school in the land, uh, in November, where the fees are £30,000 a year. 
air marshal. 30,000 pounds per pupil per year, and some families have three and four sons there. What are they paying for? Of course they're paying for good teachers. Of course they're paying for a good education. But above all, they're paying for the confidence that such an education gives their children. And when I go to Cambridge and Oxford, and I speak in these debates in the Oxford Union, the thing that strikes me most is the way 18-year-old kids, where most of our kids would be tongue-tied, unwilling to approach a prominent or famous person. These 18-year-old kids in these debating teams are standing talking with cabinet ministers and others with aplomb and confidence. And that's why, I mean, you get what you pay for, that's why the people from Eton and Oxford and Cambridge continue to rule the country, because they have this confidence. And I want to see Pakistan and Azad Kashmir develop a class, a cadre of young people and teachers that will have that confidence, that will be able to face the world with a bit more confidence. And heaven knows Pakistan needs to face the world with a bit more confidence. But I shan't stray into uh, political matters, at least Pakistani political matters, because the last man I saw do it in this hall on this stage is in the audience now and he got sacked, so I don't want to <laughs> get sacked. Some of you might have been there and may recall the occasion. Uh, but I have a long association. As Mir Saab knows, with Pakistan. It started entirely uh, by chance that I was born in a city known as Jutopolis, Dundee, in Scotland, which then was taking, was entirely dependent on the jute and flax industry and was taking its raw material from what was then Pakistan, then the United Pakistan. So I grew up in a city that had a historic connection to Pakistan. When Bhutto Saab was uh, deposed and imprisoned and subsequently hanged, I threw myself into the campaign to save his life. Because I believed then, as I believe now, that he's the best leader that Pakistan ever had. And the loss of him is, has never been entirely recovered from. I threw myself into that campaign. This drew me close to uh, Pakistan. And I've been close ever since. I hold the two highest civil awards in Pakistan. The Halal e Qadi Azam, uh, which I received in 1990 for my work on the restoration of democracy in Pakistan uh, throughout the 1980s, uh, when I used to travel widely in Pakistan underground, uh, being tailed by the forces of dictatorship at that time, under the direction of the late and great Nawab Zada Nasrullah Khan, the man with the fez and the argile, uh, which he and I used to puff away at in many, many places. In fact, I was once in Japan with him, Nawab Zada Nasrullah Khan, and he had this very fancy shisha, uh, which uh, had uh, electric rings. You didn't need coal, which he thought meant that you could evade the smoke detectors. Uh, I never quite worked out how he thought that. <laughs> Because once we started puffing, there was as much smoke as there would have been if we were using coal. And uh, when the fire alarm went off and we had to evacuate onto the streets, I told them, now Zada, if people know that we are the cause of all this, Pakistan is finished. <laughs> so I received the Hilal al uh, for that work. I subsequently received the Hilal Pakistan for my work uh, on Kashmir, which is the point I wish to turn to now if you'll permit me. In the uh, next few minutes, I shall turn, of course, to the fundraising issue, but permit me this. As uh, Mir Saab said in his introduction, I have been uh, running uh, convoys to break the siege of Gaza, which has been monstrously treated for the... <laughs> was punished, ironically, Gaza is under siege and being punished because the people there voted in a free and fair democratic election for a party that Britain, America and Israel don't like. So much for democracy. Kashmir is besieged 
and occupied illegally because it demands insists upon the implementation of international law and the right to vote in a democratic plebiscite to determine its own future. And I have supported that democratic right all of my political life. I was the founder of the National Lobby on Kashmir. I campaigned up and down this country and in Brussels, in Geneva, uh, in uh, the United States uh, and many other places in support of the Kashmir cause. And so I declared at a meeting last night and I declare uh, now to you uh, uh, an even larger uh, gathering than the one that I spoke at last evening. Next year, I will lead a mighty convoy from Britain across half the world to break the siege on Kashmir. That convoy, that convoy will collect trucks and people and goodwill and if the owners of the trucks are of a mind, uh, material aid that can go amongst other places to these schools but to the many other needs of the people in Kashmir. But most importantly, its purpose is not actually charity. The purpose of this convoy is to break the silence about the oppression and occupation of the people of Jammu and Kashmir. And I hope that I will have the support of most, if not all of you, in that. You should get your names down uh, soon if you want to uh, come with us on what will be, I think, an epic uh, journey. And not just from Bradford, though it will leave from Bradford. I see in the audience one of my oldest and closest friends, uh, the now Bailey Councillor Hanif Raja from Glasgow City Council. Welcome, brother, for coming all this way to uh, see us. And I wanted to acknowledge also Reverend Roger uh, from the Bowdoin Church making the point that all those who believe in God believe in God's children and the need to educate them and bring them up properly. This is not a Muslim cause and we're very grateful for the presence of this Christian cleric and that church which has supported this charity uh, since its inception. And uh, that brings me to uh, what I think is a part of my job. I hope I don't have to actually wield the gavel uh, because I have to <laughs> I have to drive to London this evening and so I'm hoping you'll permit me to slip away early. But I do want to uh, stress that none of this can be achieved, none of these teachers can be trained, none of these children can be educated, none of these toilets can work, none of these computers can be secured, none of that marble on the floor can be uh, laid, nothing of what you saw can be done without money. And it can't be done from the fees of the children because if they were to charge the children the fees that would be required to make these schools self-sustaining, none of the rural, underprivileged girl children would be able to go there at all. I've already said I'll press the government, but I have little faith that they will do so. So that leaves us. That leaves us. And especially you, because you have been supporting the Kashmir Education Foundation right from the beginning. And so I hope that you're going to give generously. I know you have already by buying tickets for this event. I know you probably bought raffle tickets, as I hope uh, we have, Mrs., uh, and so that we can uh, have a chance of that iPad, because uh, I'm looking for an iPad. Um, but you have to give more. And by the grace of God, MashaAllah, there's a lot of money in this room. You are successful people. And that's because of the hard work that you have put in. It's because of your brains. It's because of your character. Uh, but above all, it's by the grace of God. And as was quoted from the Holy Quran earlier this evening, that which is given by those with wealth multiplies at God's discretion many times. The barakat that you will earn from such generosity as I hope you're about to show will, inshallah, fructify many times for you 
and your families. I hope you'll give as generously as you can and then a little bit more. I'm guessing that they don't actually have to produce the cash right here this minute, although beware what the uh, uh, opening uh, remarks said about making pledges and not keeping them. Uh, but I'm guessing that you can use credit cards. We've all got them. We're all in debt. Let's get a little bit deeper into debt for a good cause rather than for uh, shopping, supposing there was anywhere in Bradford City Centre to shop. So that's, that's, another, uh, that's another story which would lead me on to Westfield and that would be an abuse of my position here uh, on this platform. So please give generously. If you don't have the cash with you, give generously by card. If you don't have either a card or cash with you, make a pledge that you intend to keep so that these wonderful schools can continue to operate and can grow uh, into many, many more. Long live the people of Kashmir, Azad Kashmir, and Indian occupied Kashmir. Long live Pakistan, Pakistan Zindabad. Thank you very much. Uh, you've seen the video, you've heard our respectable MP George Galloway, uh, he's appealed to you as well. Uh, let's see who's the first one to come up, stand up and give. I thought you raised your hand up. <laughs> Bismillah. 500 pounds from brother. What's your name? MashaAllah. Sajid. 500 pounds from Sajid, mashallah. That's fantastic. God bless you and your family, brother. Thank you very much indeed for that first. May Allah give you to that. 500 pounds from Abid. Mashallah. Sajid and Abid Kafiya Miladi Abid. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, Abid Pai is from Leeds, uh, who because superstores. Mashallah, he gives a lot of money to charities. And he's bought uh, a table for 500 and now he's donating another 500 pounds for charity. So put your hands together for Abid and Sajid together. May I accept your donations. Keep, um, you don't have to be quiet. We started at 500. I was going to start at a larger number. I'm always grateful for uh, such donations. Um, and we can say that the 500 for the table and the 500 was the number I was going to start at. There's a lot of people in this room can give a thousand. Who put their hand up? and give us a thousand for the Kashmir Education Foundation. MashaAllah, gentlemen in table three, thank you very much. May God bless you and your family for this generosity. Who will match that? There must be people who can... Yes, another one in... Is that another one in table three? No, no, no. MashaAllah, Sajid Bhai has come from all the way Roch, from Rochdale. 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 And Leeds have given. Together, 1,000 pounds? 1,000 pounds. MashaAllah. JazakAllah khair. 500 plus 500. So now we need some from Bradford, the high rollers uh, in Bradford. And there are many of those by the grace of God too. We have a uh, few donations here. Yes. I think I, it would be better if you announce them. Okay. While uh, George Galloway will announce these donations, uh, I have 200 pounds from Mr. and Mrs. Abbas. They always attend dinner and they always come up with this money. Thank you very much indeed. Put your hands together for Abbas sir. I have 150 from Untasneen Bhatt. Uh, 100 from Samia Zahur, I think, or Zahud. I have 1,000 pounds from KCB. Thank you very much from KCB. I have 230 pounds from Gulshan Malik. 230 pounds from Firdaus Khan. A hundred pounds from Saima Khalil, five hundred from Anonymous, and two thousand from Anonymous. That makes five thousand three hundred and ten on the back of this envelope. What's our target, Mr. Um, I think it's forty thousand pounds. Forty thousand pound target. So we still have some way to go. I'm still looking for thousands. Will anyone 
else from Bradford. Some of these anonymous, of course, may very well have been from Bradford because Bradford people are very shy and uh, they may be hiding their light under a bushel. But is there anyone from Bradford who will publicly donate a thousand pounds uh, to this uh, charity this evening? We have more than a pound. We have. Okay. And then? Let's move on then, shall we? My dearest friends, the first people that I called on, the very first when I first arrived in Bradford to contest this by-election, the very first people who fed me, the very first people who uh, helped me were Regal Foods and the Regal Bakery, and they've just given me, for you and the KEF, 1,300 pounds. Thank you very much for you. They are the most generous, the most uh, wonderful uh, people. And they're even making my wedding cake for next Saturday. I'm already married, but it's an illegal civil wedding. So feel free to wish us uh, all the best. Now, I talked about Bowdoin Church, and the Bowdoin Church have just donated 300 pounds. Thank you very much, Robert. Thank you. Where is these pieces of paper? Wetley Mills Limited, £1,000. Wetley Mills, God bless you all. Thank you very much indeed. What shall I do? Shall I keep talking? Sing? Tell some jokes? We have uh, a donation for £100 from Rabia Vivi and, uh, and £10 uh, direct habit every month. Mashallah. Put your hands together for Rabia Bibi. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know they're not going to let me out of here until I make significant progress. We have another donation of £50 from Carol Carrington. Would you put your hands together yes. for Carol Carrington? £50. Somebody keeping a running tally here. I could play. Now, no. what shall we do? There's a, shall I continue to press or is that getting embarrassing? I think we need to spend another few minutes. Um, we haven't reached our target, so I think we need to ask people. I think probably with your passion. Okay. Uh, now, I did stress that you don't have to put up the money now. And I'm sure from previous fundraising efforts that you can pay it up. You can make a direct debit. So for example, if you were donating a thousand pounds, then you'd be, uh, you'd be giving something like 80 to 90 pounds uh, per month. Now a thousand pounds sounds like a very great deal to many people, but many people can afford to pay it up. So if you're able to make a donation in any form, check, cash, credit card, or paying it up by direct debit, uh, please uh, indicate. Now, I'm down, I gave up on thousands, so I'm down to five hundreds. And you can also do it per table. Uh, it may be that between the six or so of you on, on a table, that together you can make uh, 500 pounds. Do I have any takers of, of that kind? Of donation. We, yes, we have the gentleman from Rothstein. Right. I will, I, I'll, let I'll let you go. Uh, thanks for you for your coming. Okay. Really pleasure to meet you. Thank you, brother. Uh, my name is Mohammed from Palestine. I will uh, from first Nabri. side. I never uh, saw from Nabri. Nabri. Uh, And I would like to give 500 pounds. Oh, Allah. Now, there's a Palestinian whose country is under occupation, whose city is my twin city in Nablus, his country is under military occupation, donating 500 pounds to another country under military occupation, which, by the grace of God, half of it is free in Azad Kashmir. Thank you very much indeed, brother, for that tremendous, tremendously generous Tremendously generous uh, gesture. And this welcome. young lady. You need to move to Bradford, by the way. 
this young lady uh, wants to donate 500 pounds. Uh, wonderful. From Glasgow, wonderful. They came all the way Thank from Palestine, all the way from Glasgow, 500 pounds. Thank you for your hands. It's Hadith Rajah's money. Did you see your granddaughter? You're not old enough to be her grandfather. <laughs> George, we have uh, our co-founder, uh, uh, Chairman, General Rahim. General Rahim, yes. He is donating 1,000 pounds. Oh. Yes, sir, thank you very much. Indeed. Yes, sir. I've never been given 1,000 pounds by a general before. That's the first time. <laughs> God bless you, General, and all your family. Thank you so much. Uh, Meher Hayat Guri uh, has donated 100 pounds. Thank you very much, indeed. And we have two donations in the form of direct debit. Uh, one from Mrs. Uh, Gulshan Khan Malik, um, and she, she, thank you very much indeed. It's for ten pound every month, and I, I have to be honest with you, that's wonderful. Right. These type of donations are wonderful. And the next one is Mrs. Firdaus Khan, again ten pound. Right. No ladies can uh, donate. Um, their husbands will have to pay perhaps, but the ladies can donate. Another standing order uh, from Zaid Aziz, if I'm pronouncing it right, uh, and that's for, there's no amount mentioned, £25 a month. Mashallah, thank you very much. Fantastic. That's very nice. And we have got Mayer Hayat Ghori. No, I gave you that. Oh, one. yeah, sorry. 100 pounds from Mayer Gai. But put your hands together for Mayer Gai again. Thank you very much indeed. Right? 500 from Bailey. Is it from you? 500 more to make a thousand. Marvellous. A thousand pounds from Glasgow. Marshall. Thank you very Marshall. much indeed. Thank you. Rajasa, we are coming on Monday, so don't don't think that we will we want more. We will want more. Definitely, you can't get away with thousand pounds. Now there's 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 a Hanif Bai is a working man. We know some very very rich men in Glasgow. Can't you donate on their behalf? <laughs> Just text them and say you donated on their behalf, and they can face me if they they if they renege on it. You know who I'm talking about. They're coming to you on Monday. Really? To avoid me. <laughs> Anonymous donation for 100 pounds. Would you put your hands together? Wow. Thank you. May Allah give you the love for this. MashaAllah. Do we have any? My role model? Mahdram Tahir Mehman Sahib from London all the way. He was the chairman, CEO of ARY Digital. Oh, wow. 200 pounds from Tahir Mehman Thank you very much. Thank you very much. They've come from far and wide. We need a bit more Bradford money, no? Okay, an anonymous lady uh, over on my left, a hundred pounds. Thank you very much indeed, whomsoever you are. And Rolex Bradford Islam, one thousand pounds. Fabulous. Thank you very much indeed for that. Well, you know, I, I've been complaining to the insurance companies about the cost of insurance car insurance premiums in Bradford. Uh, but the guy said to me, the leader of the insurance industry said to me, can I have a word in your ear before I officially reply to you? He said, you know that Bradford's got one of the finest collection of big, powerful, very expensive cars in the country? I said, don't I know it? He said, and don't you know that some of the youngest drivers in the country are driving them? And I said, I know it. So. 
Mashallah, we've got wealth here in Bradford. We have many problems, but we have a lot of successful people uh, too. Now, many of these anonymous donors may very well have been uh, from Bradford uh, people, but if there is anyone who would like to make a splash this evening. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> Thank you. We've already given privately, and there's no point in me giving publicly because I have to give uh, every event that I uh, go to. So. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much indeed for. Uh, we got another fifty-pound donation from Mohsen Mirshad Ahmed. Thank, Thank you, you very much indeed. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much, George. Can I take your leave? Uh, brothers, sisters, ladies and gentlemen, please forgive my wife and I if we uh, take your leave now because we have a four-hour uh, drive ahead of us because we have an important engagement uh, tomorrow. Uh, but I'll be uh, back in Bradford uh, very shortly, in a few days' time, in fact. And of course, if I can help any of you, my office is at 2 Grattan Road and my staff there are at your service. If you need to call me, my, I'm the only MP in the country that gives out their mobile number, so write down this number now, 07894, 07894-585-465, and call me anytime, day or night. If you don't get through, leave a text, and I'll get back to you, or you can email me at gallowayg at parliament.uk, or you can follow me on Twitter at George Galloway, or you can join me on Facebook at George Galloway MP. Wassalamu alaikum. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you very much. Would you put your hands together for George Galloway? Thank you very much. Have a safe journey back. Marshal, right at the end, uh, we have a, a standing order donation for £50 a month. And that's from Mohammed Ibn Khalid Nabusa, your choice state agents. And they are based, Khalid Nabusa, they are based in Bradford, 86 Toner Lane, Bradford. Thank you very much, Khalid, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, we go to, before we uh, announce the raffle prizes and, and